Hey everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. Today we've got Spencer Nugent, who, fun fact, is the very first industrial designer we've had on the Adobe first. Live. The first. The wow. first. Wow. Uh, you may know Spencer from sketchaday.com. Yeah, yeah, that's my uh, website. I like drawing. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, well, today we're gonna do a lot of drawing. Uh, we are going to do a chat and win. And then we're also gonna be reviewing some of your stuff from the Creative Challenge that Anna Davis Court just gave you. So um, get ready to watch Spencer draw and get your questions ready too. Cool. Yeah, so um, I guess just a little bit about myself, yeah. a little bit more. Um, I'm from Jamaica. I actually start. I, I haven't been an artist my whole life. I was a math major, so. Yeah, wow. I wanted to be a math teacher of all things. Math to drawing makes I know, total sense. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> well, actually, if you think about it, math has a lot to do with creativity. And yeah, that's true. Design, drawing, you know, yeah. creativity, problem solving. So, um, so yeah, today we're just going to design and, and do this cool creative activity together. Um, but to start, I, I came with a product in mind. Um, okay. I'm an industrial designer as well by trade, so that's what I do. I design products. And one of the things with products is when you're trying to do something different, you want to think laterally and creatively. Like it's important to talk to your users, people are gonna use those products, but also if you wanna find new solutions or come up with creative solutions. Um, there's a few tools that you can use that I'll show you today, and Fresco is really great for this as well. Um, so to get started, I've created this canvas here, um, just standard size, not really being too picky about it. And as far as my tools go, I'm just gonna be using the pencil uh, primarily, um, along with a few brushes like the marker chisel and hard round and some soft airbrushes as well. So the, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just, keep going. Oh, so the technique I'm using is called scamper. Have you guys heard of this before? Have that you heard of it before, awesome. bro? It sounds like a rabbit, I don't know. <laughs> Scam I don't scamper know. the rabbit. Um, so it actually stands for a substitute, substitute, Combine, adapt, oh, can't spell today, <laughs> modify, or magnify. Well, we'll just keep that there. I'm not used to writing vertically. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's a tough weird. one. Uh, put to another use, to another... All right, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> Enhance <laughs> and replace. Replace or remove. Ooh, okay, I like this. Yeah. So we'll go through these step by step. I'm gonna turn it off for now, or maybe I'll just adjust the opacity here. So with Fresco, I can just tap on this little icon at the top right, slide my opacity down, and it's there. You'll see it on the screen. Don't worry. So we're gonna be looking at something like a power drill okay. today. I like cool. hand tools. I actually do some woodworking in my spare time. So nice. um, I thought, hey, what if we redesigned a power drill today? Yeah. Um, and so when I'm designing something, I like to kind of take a, an audit, if you will, of what the real product is. So consult the book of knowledge, go to Google, take a look at pictures, understand what this thing is. So in its basic parts, a power drill it's kind of like this. You've got a barrel, <clears throat> something like so. You have a chuck that holds the tool, or the, the bit rather, that okay. goes in there. Um, typically some sort of adjustment for the direction. So this might be a way to say, hey, if I want to put a screw in, if I want to take a screw out, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a handle attached. And depending on if we want to do a corded drill, it probably has something like that for the cord or some sort of battery. And the battery kind of serves two purposes. One, so I can put my drill on a flat surface, but also functioning as the power source. Wow, this is awesome. In just like five seconds, you've knocked out a drill. Yeah, just, a, <laughs> just a thumbnail. This is, <laughs> this is by no means the final thing. Um, but more importantly, this is just an orthographic sketch, meaning I'm looking at this dead on straight so I can understand the design and what those key parts are. And yeah. I, can, I can actually label those. Um, so here's my handle. I've got a battery. I'll just abbreviate that. This is the chuck, it's called. There's likely a trigger of some sort as well. And we'll say this is the main body. Now, I'm not a power tool designer per se, but mm -hmm. 
I believe that as a designer, you can take a look at pretty much anything. And if you study it and look at the, the parts that are functional, you can then uh, jump into that creative exercise and start modifying things. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is think to myself, okay, if I wanna come up with a new approach to a drill, what could I substitute here? So let's take a look at the handle. Um, and I've got a couple options um, for this handle. So for example, I can ask myself the question, what if the handle, uh, what if the handle was a wheel, or what if it was a ball, or what if it was flexible or bendable? Um, what if there were two handles on this thing? What if uh, there were three handles, right? So we can substitute this. Um, I'm gonna say, and I've got my list here on my laptop. We can also can ask see. the chat about. Oh, we'll get to that point. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be a dictator for a minute, and then <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask you guys <laughs> what we wanna do here. Um, so I'm just gonna start by listing off a couple of things. So the handle, um, I'm gonna say, you know, what if it was a ball or a wheel? I'm gonna have a couple options here. And we're gonna substitute the handle for those things. Um, for the body, let's say we wanted to, um, I'm just gonna write down some, some words here. So light, or we could say bendy, mm. for example. Um, the battery, okay, what if the battery was inflatable? I know it sounds crazy, but part of... That sounds cool. Yeah, part of creative ideas is just thinking broadly and thinking, <laughs> you know, embracing those things that make you really uncomfortable, because yeah. I think that's where some of the best ideas come from. An inflatable um, power tool sounds dangerous and interesting, and maybe right, less dangerous, right. actually. Um, so for the trigger, I'm gonna use a wheel. Maybe the trigger's a wheel, or... What if we were to combine the trigger and the handle? So what if we were to combine these, okay? So just taking these notes, and actually I'm gonna undo that. And let's merge these layers down. Because I actually took my notes on a separate layer. So you, you may have noticed as I moved that layer, the notes kind of got detached from that sketch. So just transform this down. And I'm gonna keep these notes, just a little lower opacity, and on a new layer. I will say, I am terrible at layer organization, so if you get lost, <laughs> feel free to hit me up in the chat, ask a question if I'm going too fast. That's totally fine as yeah, well. Yeah, I, th I think that like people are split half and half between like really terrible layer organization and yeah, like I, must I am, have layer names. I am the worst, <laughs> the um, absolute worst. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to a few people who just joined the chat. Um, we've got Tanya, who I actually, I know from Fresco stuff. She draws on Fresco windows. Oh, sweet. What's up, uh, Tanya? Mahati, David, Jordan. Um, and I think we should ask, I, I kind of want to ask the chat a question. You're oh, from Jamaica. Yeah. I wonder if anyone else in the chat is. Is from anyone from the Car cool. Caribbean? Anyone? So you say Caribbean? Or is it Caribbean? I say Caribbean. Okay. That's, is that the that's how I grew up saying okay. it. Okay. But so some people say Caribbean. <laughs> I was having this conversation with my sister the other day. Oh, really? Um, whether it's Caribbean or Caribbean, yeah. We've what been is your in, sister? We've been in the U.S. too long, but okay. she prefers Caribbean, as okay. do I. Okay, okay. So. Cool. Okay, so, right. so the next step here, and this is kind of my approach or my workflow, is I like to approach things in a three-step process if I'm drawing an object, pretty much of any kind, whether it's a house, whether it's a piece of furniture, a chair, a drill, whatever, and that is form, divide, beautify. So another note here, I'll just write this down. Form, divide, and then beautify. This is awesome, I feel like I'm getting a lesson. Yeah, it is kind of a lesson. It's really nice. <laughs> well, I'm used to teaching online, that's, that's what yeah, I do yeah. at Sketch Today, so um, I like to kind of break things down and explain how I do things. Um, Colby says he's from Florida. Does that I kind of count? counts, there's a lot of people from the close Caribbean there. You're like neighbors. Yeah, close-ish, <laughs> close-ish. Um, so form refers to the overall shape or uh, three-dimensional representation of a thing. Um, it could be a room, it could be the product itself, but we're just trying to capture what that raw geometry is. So let's start there. So on this separate layer, and the other thing I like to do sometimes, um, and I kind of stole this from illustration animation, if you will, is I like to work in red and blue pencil, mm. um, just as a way to quickly layer things. So I've switched my color here to red, which is my color picker. And I'm also gonna try and decide, okay, what point of view do I wanna sketch this thing in? Okay, but let's quickly capture the, the uh, structure here of the form. 
So to do that, like I said, if I zoom in here on this drill, we have the barrel, we have the handle, the battery, and the chuck, and that's kind of blocked out. So that's what I'm gonna do here in perspective. Okay, so just roughly sketch this in and I can project back like so down. And now I have a block that I can use as a point of reference for the main body of this drill. The next thing is I wanna get the handle in. So just to keep things simple, I'm gonna project down like so, and now I have another box. Okay, so I've eliminated some of the guesswork in the perspective by just working out that, that structure up front. The next would be the battery. Again, just another block. And I can always check my perspective. In fact, I can already see I made kind of a mistake here. Um, but I want these lines to feel like they all converge at some point off in the distance. So do you ever use perspective like guides or grids or do you just kind of do everything from just like you've done it so much and so long that you can just You tell? know, it's, it's interesting you ask because I just recorded a YouTube video this week um, that explains why I don't use tools. So, but since you guys are here, we're having this moment together, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> and then go to sketchyday.com and subscribe, yes, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the reason I don't use tools is actually, like, I think there's some benefit in doing things the hard way um, because those tools aren't always available. So there's times where as a designer, I'll find myself sitting with a client and I need to sketch something. So if I'm, if I'm always practicing with a tool or doing my drawings with a tool, I. I feel as though I may become reliant on that. And I don't ever want to feel like I'm gated or uh, restricted by the need to use a specific tool. So I'll even sit at a restaurant. Um, have you been to those restaurants where they give kids crayons? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just sit and draw on the table sometimes <laughs> with crayons. Uh, but my point is, I don't, I don't feel uh, like I need to be constrained to a specific tool. So whether it be ellipses or perspective or anything like that, I try to do it freehand. My straight lines, all of that stuff. Very In cool. fact, I did skip over an important step, but maybe What's I'll, the... oh, just warming up. Oh, should we, yeah. Should we go over that real quick? I think that'd be good. Yeah? I feel like that's a really okay. good thing to do. Yeah, bad habit, or yeah, bad habit, I guess. I, I do this so often that sometimes I don't warm up, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing to do. All right, so I'm gonna turn these layers off. We're gonna backtrack just a little bit. We'll get back to our, our design here. Um, but just on this layer, there's three things I like to do. Uh, four if you count stretching, which I already kind of did this morning at the gym. Um, stretch, you'll notice that I'm drawing with my shoulder and my elbow. Those are my pivots. Okay. I'm not drawing, but I'm gonna stretch too. It's all good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> lock my wrist as much as possible. And how I hold my pencil as well. So I try to hold it uh, about halfway up the barrel, and that gives me more control and visibility. Um, for my drawing itself. Gotcha. So as far as the warm-ups go, the first is straight lines. So I'll put two points on the canvas and try and draw as straight a line as possible. Yes, there are drawing assistive tools for this, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I like the human aspect of the irregularities yeah. that come. So if I draw a little faster, you'll see that those lines become better. Yeah. For those of you who want to cheat, you can draw the, the line and hold it and it will snap to a straight line. If you have Fresco and there if you, you have the experimental settings Yeah, so I on. could do this. But that's cheating, really. But it's too really. perfect. <laughs> you know, I, I like the feeling of, of these lines yeah. way better. Okay, so that's the first exercise. And then the next one I like to do is circles. And I do this by ghosting over the, ca over the canvas. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm ignoring your text or the chat. Um, it just means that I'm hovering over the canvas. Okay, so I hover, practice, and then let's see, my layer is hidden. Okay, so hover, practice, and when I'm ready, I draw that, that circle on the canvas. Very okay. cool. So I like to do these as well as a warm up. You can go slow, fast. Drawing bigger always helps. So, you know, and that's, that's one of the cool things about an iPad Pro or working digitally is I can zoom in and draw big. So for example, if I draw a circle, let's see, if I draw, if I zoom in here, I'm at 276%, some arbitrary number, but I can draw 
a big oh, circle. Yeah. And then when I zoom out, it actually looks pretty good, right? It's actually easier to draw bigger than it is to draw small. So yeah. there's a little pro tip for you. So we've got a couple questions I'm going to answer really quickly. People are asking how to turn on uh, snap to a straight line. And if you go to the settings icon. So let's see, settings. And you go to app settings. There's a cool little tab there down at the bottom called experimental. And that's where we're going to shove all of our cool experimental features in that aren't quite ready to ship. So it's like you get a sneak preview. Uh, of stuff that's in there. So keep an eye on that section because more stuff will be coming Absolutely. to that Absolutely. I actually didn't know this was there until I think it was last night I was playing with it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, let me let me try that. <laughs> and I tried it. I was like, okay, cool. They added that. Yeah. So yeah. And then we had one more question while you were doing the warm ups. Um, they're asking if you draw from a reference image or you draw from real life. They're asking how, like, when you were drawing that drill, like, are oh. you looking at something or are you just, like, in your head? You just that is know a great it. question. Um, number one, I am an amateur woodworker. I like to dabble. So I kind of know what a drill looks like. But I also checked Google this morning, or as I like to call it, the book of knowledge, <laughs> and just got a couple ideas real quick in my head. Um, but yes, that's a really good point. It's important to draw from observation or pull from observation mm -hmm. so that you can draw from your imagination. So feed your brain. Gotcha. Um, if you're Ooh, going I into, like that. If you, yeah, feed your brain. If you're going into a new uh, project or experience or anything, just look up some reference image, imagery. Nothing wrong with that. Feed your brain, people. Feed your brain. Okay, last thing I like to do, ellipsis. And the reason I like to do ellipsis is with product design, there's a lot of circles on products. And products in perspective that have circles become ellipses. So this will make sense when we start doing our drill a bit more. But similar to the circles, doing that ghosting activity, hovering, and putting it on the canvas, um, I'm able to come up with some more confident lines. I'm just going to delete this layer. A little bird told me that this is going to be a little easier soon. Clearing the layer. OK. Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Clear the layer is coming soon. <laughs> OK. So was I not supposed to say that? Sorry, yeah, you can say it. OK. <laughs> okay I, so, gave, uh, I gave Spencer a sneak peek at some of the cool stuff that's coming. Um, so I'm just going to do a couple more ellipses because I want to show you something cool here. And then we'll go back to our drill. Um, so the other thing I like to do with ellipses is if you start with a straight line, and then you start with a tighter ellipse, and you kind of open that up progressively on this line. Maybe you've seen this before, Brooke. Uh, I think, maybe. I think I did this one <laughs> yeah, at Max. Yeah, you did. OK. <laughs> I was a TA for Spencer's class at Max, which was really awesome. Uh, yeah, so if you warm up kind of like this, and when an ellipse opens more like that, that's called the degree of the ellipse. Also just posted a video on YouTube about that. That explains it. But uh, when you open that ellipse, that's increasing the degree of the ellipse, which is essentially referencing the point of view you're looking at an object. So with that, I, I tend to do a few pages of these just to warm up. But um, don't think that warming up is you know, something that's annoying or you know, it's, it's, it's unnecessary. Because with this, I can add a few lines mm. like so. And I'm just going to pick this other ellipse here. Add a few lines. I'm going to make my pencil just a little bit bigger. There we go. Like that. And while you're drawing that, I just want to bump in and say, if you didn't notice, Chat and Win Countdown is at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, and we'll give you, we'll give everyone a prompt on what they should chat about. Ooh. I have an idea for one. OK. So, I see what you're doing. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. It's definitely not a drill. I say that. <laughs> it's definitely not a drill. But with that warm up exercise, I can quickly draw a car. That is super cool. So I learned this from Spencer, uh, like I said, during his class at Max. And I was like, whoa. And I can, like, I don't draw cars. Like, like my car drawings are like the, you know, square boxy things that you learn when you're a kid. Um, and I was able to draw a car just yeah, based on this go. quick tutorial, which is super cool. Yeah, so in five minutes, we drew just a quick car using our warm up. Eh, front end's a little bit wide, but it's OK. We love all our children. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's the importance of warming up. And I think the more you do this, the better and more confident your, your sketches will become. OK, so back to our drill. I'm going to turn these layers back on. There we go. So I have to ask, what, what kind of a car was that? That was, uh, I'm not sure. I just 
maybe maybe, maybe. just a two door coupe yeah. of some sort. I was gonna say. Yeah, no it brand. Kinda, Usually you can tell like the, a like a Lexus or like It's definitely a, not a Cybertruck. <laughs> no, what, what do you think I was about, like, about it? Tesla. I actually Should we really, talk about it? What do you I think about it? I actually really kind of like the okay. Cybertruck. Okay. Like at first I came out I was like, "Oh my gosh, like what is he doing?" <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I kind of like where he went with it. Like, yeah, I remember the you night. Could, you could design like a standard truck, and everyone would like yawn and go away. But like, he takes risks, and he... like, love him or hate him, like, it's actually kind of cool. It's like he went there. Yeah, I'm kind of curious what everyone else on the chat thinks about the cyber yeah, truck. Yeah, I remember the night, and I texted a friend of mine, uh, Hector is his name, and I was like, just laughing. And then the next morning, I woke up, and I'm like, this is actually kind of cool. Like but that. it comes with an ATV. It does, it, <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if it comes with it, but it, wow, it can okay. work with an ATV. It can work sure. with an ATV. <laughs> okay, so now I've, oh, let me turn off my uh, circle layer here. Voodoo Val there says, how to draw a car. Step one, draw circles. Step two, <laughs> draw the rest of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah, that's that's a running joke with uh, artists who are doing this for a while. Yeah. It's like, yeah. step one, line. Step two, complete <laughs> thing. Complete owl. <laughs> yeah. So with Fresco... And I can actually select this portion of this drill because looking at it, I'm like, you know, the handle probably used to be a little bit, little bit longer and we'll, we'll tweak this a little bit as well. Um, so now I can move this down just a little bit. And then let's see, I'm gonna deselect and move this up on the page just a little bit. And when I'm ready, I can connect these. Okay, so that's step one is the form. So step two is to then Divide. Now, divide doesn't necessarily mean split. Um, with divide, I'm adding transitions. I'm starting to block things out a little bit more. Um, I don't want this drill to be a box, for example. Mm -hmm. So now I need to define what this, this barrel might be. I mean, it could be a cyber drill. It could be a cyber drill. <laughs> hey, there's an idea. <laughs> Should we use that as inspiration for the aesthetics? That could be kind of fun. Okay, okay. I'll try and keep it a little bit crisp. Yeah. crisper. Um, one of the people in the chat, and I don't want to pronounce the name because I know I'm going to butcher it, but uh, said that he fired the guy who designed the glass that broke that same evening. I did not know that. Oh, he did? Yeah. Wow. I just remember like when it, he's like, it's bulletproof, and then he shoots yeah. it. I was like, oh, this is not going to go well, and then he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's that's unfortunate. Okay, cool. so inside those boxes, I've started to draw some curves, and now you can see I have the barrel for this drill, um, and maybe some indication of what the truck might be. And then, actually, I'm just gonna zoom in here. So right here in this area, you'll notice that there's a very sharp transition. So if I just add a quick curve and zoom out, it's already starting to feel a little bit more familiar and like a drill. Cool. Same thing here on the bottom, like so. And where a battery is, I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger. Sketch in, like so, okay. So I've got the beginning stages of my divide phase in here. And even on the front, I feel like Maybe that's a little bit too sharp. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna scale this down. And like I said, I use red and blue pencil. The red is giving me like the a ray just... gun feel or something. Yeah, and it's it's kind of the first layer, mm -hmm. if you will, but uh, just a, a quick quick way to work because Very I can cool. just switch my color to blue now nice. and start to, to change things. Now, I'm not gonna forget the initial exercise of uh, scamper that I wanted to do. So let me pull up my thumbnail. Cool, and while you're pulling up your thumbnail, I just want to remind everyone, Chat and Win is in five minutes. And please, I'm checking out the Discord Creative Challenge. Make sure you do Anna's uh, Discord Challenge, which was mix and match, blah, 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 cannot talk, mix and match images of winter plants to create a festive wreath. I'm excited to start seeing these things show up, and we'll be reviewing those later in the segment. So less than five minutes, get ready to Chat and Win, and we'll, right. we'll give you a prompt <clears throat> about what to do. So what if what if on this drill we decided to substitute the handle for a ball? What might what might that look like? You know, is it is it something that we'd want to place here? And a ball being a sphere, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is where things start to get kind of weird as you're being creative. So, you know, if, if I had a ball here and I were to try and hold this thing, it might be a little bit awkward. But what if we instead gonna move this over, 
Let's work small for a bit. Okay. And what if instead we took this handle and moved it on the end, like mm. so. And now we have kind of this this ball. So this is this is my handle here. Okay. So now I've I've combined these two things, and I'm saying, hey, you know, maybe you, you hold this drill. It could be potentially awkward, but that's all right. We're just having fun here. <laughs> um, and we can also scale this. So if that doesn't make sense, maybe it's you know something a little smaller makes makes a bit more sense as well. Uh, I'm gonna adjust my eraser, make it a little bit bigger, and erase what we don't need. Just like so. And add that transition in. Very cool. Okay, well if my handle moves, where do we put the battery? Okay, and I had a couple notes. Battery, maybe that's inflatable. Not sure that necessarily makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna say that I'm gonna combine the battery and the body. So using that scamper technique. And maybe let's move the battery into the body itself. So mm. something like that maybe. Okay. Now I did wanna make something bendy. I did say the, the body could be bendy mm -hmm. as well. Um, the other thing I like to do is play with the opacity. So when in light, or sorry, when in doubt, rough it out when I'm entering <laughs> a product design, but also work light till you get it right. So I can play with the opacity, scale that down. Very nice. And go back to my layer here. So still using that as a guide. And now I can say, hey, you know, maybe the, the body of this drill could be a little bit bendy. Maybe things are getting a little weird here. But that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's for when you really need to like get into those yeah. spaces, you know? Yeah, I'm not really feeling that, so I'm gonna erase, <laughs> I'm gonna erase that. <laughs> it's making me a little uncomfortable. Um, so I'm just gonna erase that. And there's other ways for it to bend. Like, for example, we could say, what if there was some sort of hinge mechanism as a part of this? <clears throat> Hmm, I like that idea. Yeah. So rather than, you know, this uh, undefined thing, can add a little bit of structure to this as well. Moving the chuck down like so, where the drill bit goes. Hmm. Nice. And battery goes in there like so. Let's move that over. So we can even catalog that as an idea and we can keep that's going, cool. but that's yeah. the idea of, of Scamper is it's a way to just kind of think. Riff on your ideas laterally. and like push them forward. Yep, Very absolutely. cool. Um, so we've got chat and win in one minute. And so here's here's my here's my thoughts on what they okay. should like chat to win. And to win you get 100 die cut uh, stickers from Sticker Mule. Um, so I think the prompt should either be like favorite car, since we were talking about Tesla, or favorite power tool. Okay. I think favorite power tool. Yeah, favorite power tool works. That'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so get ready. Uh, in just a few seconds, we're going to do chat and win. All right, so. So still playing with this. I moved the ball up, added this little detail on it. Not sure how that's going to work entirely yet, but like I said, we're just having fun. All right, let's chat and win. All right, we've got 20, 20 seconds until we get chat and win. Um, and just as a reminder for those of you who are just joining, this is Spencer. We're doing riffing on industrial design products. We're working on a drill that's inflatable and bendy and uh, the handle is a ball. Um, all right, chat and win. In four seconds, uh, tell us what your favorite power tool is and we will be back in a few seconds. All right, we're back. I think people are getting ready to chat. So we've got a Dremel, ergonomic mouse, <laughs> Milwaukee fuel hole, chainsaw, chainsaw. drill, <laughs> radio arm saw. That's very iPad favorite power tool. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Scroll good one. Scroll saw, jigsaw, table saw, drills. 
multi-tool saw, laptop. Wow, we've got a lot of people who enjoy saws. Yeah. Dremel, jackhammer, table saw, nail gun, circular saw. <laughs> All right, we're chatting. And our winner is Sean Kelly. Congratulations, Circle Sean. Saw, Sean Kelly. You won 100 three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Uh, we'll let you know in the chat. We'll reach out to you on how to redeem that. For everyone else, um, you also win. You can get, I believe, 15% off. Um, 10 stickers for a dollar. 10 stickers for a dollar, I'm sorry. 10 stickers for a dollar if you use the code uh, stickermule.com slash adobelive19. So congrats, Son Kelly. We'll be re reaching out to you in the chat. Awesome, sticker mule. I need some stickers, so I, I think know. I'm gonna check them out. Actually pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah. Did they do die cut as well? They do die cut stickers. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect, yeah. Um, 100 die cut stickers for free is pretty rad. So while we were doing chat and win, I had another idea. I was like, because I saw someone mention the Milwaukee whole hog, uh -huh. and I thought, what if this had another handle, and then the main handle was something different? So maybe this auxiliary handle is the ball. Ooh. Yeah, and then we combine that ball with a trigger, so when I rotate this ball, it actually actuates the drill. So that could be, that could be an idea. So again, substitute, combine, adapt, modify. Mm -hmm. And this idea of a wheel, or a donut, maybe this is, Ooh. yeah, maybe this is the back handle here, like so. It sounds like someone is drilling above us, speaking yeah. of drills. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you guys can hear that on the stream or not. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I kind of like this better. So I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. Um, feels a little bit more practical, but kind of uh, bridges the gap between being impractical mm -hmm. and uh, also just different. So we've got our adjustable head, we've got this auxiliary handle on the side, the battery. Yeah. I uh, can't really see it, but what if we extended that down? So you can, it's, it's, so, so it's like a two handed thing where you like have yeah, to hold so, a little donut and then yeah, like. Yeah, if you got a big job. I like that. Yeah, you could hold a little donut and then hold the, the, the knob and maybe that's the way that. Um, we actuate things. Okay, so I have my rough sketch. Now I, now I, this, at this point, I like to knock the opacity down again, and then pick a better brush to get all my details in. And for that, let's. I'm going to turn off my scamper layer for now. Little tip. So there's this little touch icon here. You can see it on the mm -hmm. screen. If I press and hold that, and then double tap on a layer, it'll actually turn that layer on or off. Just a little shortcut for cool. you. Cool. So I'll turn off these layers, and now you can see I have kind of my underlay here. All right, <laughs> and if I were making a sketch page, um, you know, I'd want to capture all my ideas and put these on the page as well, if if they have something to do with the main sketch. Um, but we're gonna transition a little bit later, and I'll show you show you a way to to combine some of these sketches into uh, a better presentation. Cool. David says, you know your tools. Need to leverage for all that torque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depe right, depends you, on the job. I guess like you're doing woodworking, so you, you know a decent amount about yeah, tools. Yeah, it, dep it depends on the job, right? <laughs> okay, so I have a new layer here, and under my brushes, I have some favorites. Oop. I'm gonna actually dock this so you guys can see that. Cool. Um, so there's a little pill-shaped thing at the top of your brush panel. You can undock or dock that. So I'm gonna use, let's see. How about this hard round variable brush? Because that way, if I put a bit more pressure on the screen, I get a thicker line, and if I work lightly, I'll get a nice thin line. Gotcha. So at this point, I'm gonna adjust the size here. So at this point, this is where I'm trying to just be a little bit more careful with these lines and how I apply them, or how I draw them, rather. Working roughly is nice because it, it really does take the stress out of worrying about getting it perfect up front. Yeah, so I, I really like your little um, your little mantras. When in doubt, rough it out. And what was the? It was get light it, till you get it right. Light till you get it right. Light till you get it right. I really like that. Yeah. Okay. So for this part, again, just working nice and light. And I'm doing what I like to call redrawing, so I'm not tracing mm -hmm. the sketch underneath. If I were to trace, it's a very uh, mentally intensive process because you're so focused on getting it perfect that things tend to just 
not feel as good. So I like to use the bottom layer as a guide and just sketch just as quickly as I would if I were doing that rough sketch. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, you said you started out as a, as a math major. What made you switch to industrial design? That's a good question. So my father actually was a chemist and biologist by trade, ended up being a business exec executive growing mm -hmm. up. And, but in his spare time, he would uh, draw and paint at mm. home. So I was always exposed to art. I just didn't think I could do anything with it. So when I went to college and I thought I wanted to um, study math and, and be a math teacher, I had a friend who I ended up working with later in life, interestingly enough, mm -hmm. um, who was studying industrial design. And as soon as I saw what he was doing, the model making, the sketching, the product concepts ideas, I thought, this is it. Um, That's cool. This is a way that I get to do the things I love. I get to use computers. I get to be artistic. Um, I get to make things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is really cool. So I started the program, and I was determined to uh, <laughs> not be the worst in my class. So <laughs> I worked really, it was a really competitive program. I mean, where did you go? I went to Brigham Young University in Utah, okay. actually. Um, so private, private university. Uh -huh. And so they would cut students every year if you weren't good enough. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's terrifying. I mean, it's I mean, like, I, I, like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's only, uh, so many resources, you know, um, plus it, it, it helps to, you know, make sure that people are a little bit serious about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I, I mean, I kind of had the same in my, it was like my sophomore year. You, you all had to, um, I went to Kansas State University. Oh, okay. Um, but you have like a portfolio review your sophomore year and you have to like hang everything up and they do, they yep. kind of do the same. Like they cut 20% mm -hmm. each year or each, each time they do the review. Um, but yeah, it, it does make sure that you're serious about yeah. it. You can't just sort of like float along, yeah, which I think can't, is good. Can't. Uh, it's not a joke. <laughs> if, no. If you have to start over your major or repeat a year, it's not. You know. Yeah. It's not totally a joke. So, yeah, I just worked really hard, and um, turned out I was I was pretty okay at it. Um, actually, worked in San Francisco for a bit. Oh really? Ended up yeah, just a couple blocks down here. Um, ended up. Uh, at Frog. No, I was at Astro Studios. Astro Studios, yeah. okay. Astro Studios. They designed the Xbox 360. I didn't, but they did. <laughs> and uh, that's a whole other story I can tell you, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. But uh, did that. Also interned at General Motors for a bit. Oh, wow. And decided I didn't want to do car design. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why is that? You know, I love drawing, but I didn't love cars and I think oh, to be a car designer you have, you have to, to really kind of yeah I that that was just my take yeah um, I feel I feel like it, it takes a special passion for that so yeah. wasn't wasn't really um, what I felt like I, I should do so. gotcha what's your favorite thing that you've like your most favorite project or like favorite thing you've designed you know everyone always asks me that but well, I guess you asked me a little differently. So my favorite project, uh -huh. I built a custom home once. Oh. And I was able to do the exterior design of that home, and I did a lot of the interior. Um, As in like a house that you lived in? Yeah. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah, I built, built the house I lived in. So um, I don't live there anymore. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was, that was a fun project. That's awesome. OK. All right, so we got our form. Divided it, now it's time to beautify. And that, that means just adding all the details and functional elements that make this thing work um, and make it kind of make sense. It's a little bit weird, it's different, but that's okay. I, I, I'm kind of into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different. If I turn off that blue layer, you'll see how I was able to work up from um, that rough sketch to something a bit more, more defined. Mm -hmm. and. There, there's a concept that um, I try to keep in mind, which is I want to keep things loose, but not sloppy. And it's, it's mm. kind of a, a tension, if you will, or a balance that you kind of have to strike or find as you're designing or illustrating something. Um, so for example, 
you know, sloppy might be if I were to do something like that. Right. As opposed to loose, where I have a few lines that are deliberately executed in a way that um, reinforces the sketchiness of the presentation. Also, keep in mind that if you are presenting something that, well, not you, but if I'm presenting something, I like to think of who's going to be looking at it. Mm. Because if I'm showing it to another designer, I can take a lot more liberties, if you will, than yep. if I were showing it to someone who wasn't design minded. Um, yeah, that and, totally makes sense. And might sense. be confused. The other thing I'm noticing is like when you say you're um, you're keeping it loose, is that a lot of the sort of like a lot of the strokes that you're creating are are implying and showing motion of like how that like you know the circles on the the end of the drill um, sort of imply that it's going to be spinning, right? Like so. You're, oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Um, I hadn't really considered that, but I have another way that I like to do that. Okay. And I was going to show that I was going to use that on the handle itself, um, but you kind of got a little bit ahead of me. Oops. <laughs> nah, it's totally, <laughs> totally fine. Um, so again, part of this be beautify process is just adding these elements. So here I am showing that for this chuck, if I want to put some, put another bit in this, like if I want to change this out mm -hmm. for something, I've added these double lines, and then just this little hit at the end of these lines. It's enough to create a symbolic representation mm -hmm. of what's actually happening. Because I, I try not to overload the sketch with too much precision because it is a sketch. So keeping it just loose enough mm -hmm. um, sets an expectation that, hey, this is an idea. It's not a finished thing just yet. People, are, people in the chat are actually really loving it too. Um, and I don't know if anyone in the chat can hear, but we have like some special sound effects going on. <laughs> we actually hired a construction crew <laughs> to work at the same time for those sound effects. So hopefully you appreciate Just to that. Just kind of like set the mood, <laughs> you know, some drills, some tapping, some pounding. Exactly. So if I want to, for example, uh, adjust something here, or maybe maybe this is, I don't know. I'm just gonna throw a switch on. This isn't entirely thought out. Usually I'll, I'll think things out a little bit more, but yeah. I like the idea of a switch being here. So right. Someone I'm in the chat said earlier on. they were asking about the LED light. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll add an LED light just for you. Who, was, forget who, who was it in the I, chat? I, I forget who it was. It was actually like probably like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was going to name the LED light after the person. Okay. If we wanted oh. an LED light, where would we put that? I mean, if you're working in this direction, and if I'm looking this way, I would want this whole area illuminated, right? Right. So I wonder, hmm, maybe we can put it here and I'll get rid of the switch. Again, this is, this is one of the things I do love about working digitally um, <laughs> is you can just paint and erase and go <laughs> and modify and um, the creative process is just so fluid. And Fresco does a really good job of that, so oh. I do appreciate That's good. Uh, being able to do that. We've got some. Uh, we've got a lot of people in the chat asking where they're from. We've got some someone from Pakistan watching, someone from Bangladesh, someone from Istanbul. We've got a lot of got a wide variety of people in here. Still, no one from Jamaica. No Jamaicans. We've got. I saw a few few people from Miami. You know, I haven't, Florida. I haven't, I don't think I've met another Jamaican designer, oh, indu really? industrial designer. I haven't okay. met a Jamaican industrial designer. So That's maybe I need to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna tweak something here because my perspective feels a little bit off. I have a co uh, comment on your lines. It says your lines are beautiful and confident. Which is a Thank you. Awesome. Which, which you worked a lot on, like. Yes. So, like, I'm, what would be your advice for anyone who's looking to sort of like refine their line work? You should watch my YouTube channel because <laughs> <laughs> I actually have videos on this um, oh, really? with tips. Yeah. So I will say this: when I worked at GM as an intern, I was completely stressed out of my mind because I was not. And I mean, I'm still not a formally, a formally trained car designer. Mm. <laughs> so I got in my head a lot. You know, I was just so stressed and I, I couldn't function. I remember 
that summer just being so insecure. Um, this will make sense for the lines, but it wasn't until I got out of myself that and realized that, hey, you know, if I actually relax, my work is way better. So part of it is just relaxing as you mm -hmm. work and you know, not making it feel so serious that the stress overwhelms you. And gotcha. that would be that would be some of my advice for you. That's good advice. Got a question about um, working on an iPad small screen versus like like large HD monitor. Mm. Do you have a preference? Or? I because of how I work. So I work mm -hmm. from home. Um, I do freelance designs, illustrations, all that stuff, and going back to that idea of uh, being in your best mindset when you draw, mm -hmm. being comfortable. So sometimes yeah. I'll work in bed, sometimes I'll work on a couch, I'll be at the coffee shop, whatever, and being able to just pull out my iPad and start working is awesome. So I don't like being constrained to, uh, and I guess related to tools, yeah. to one specific thing or a physical location. So I, I, do, I do appreciate and enjoy um, working with with the iPad Pro for that for that reason. So here's an example of me being aware of something that I made a mistake on, which is mm. this handle that's supposed to be a ball. It's mm -hmm. not quite centered um, on this line in perspective. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a couple of things I could do. I could erase it and redraw it, but we're working digitally. I'm just gonna make a selection here with the lasso tool. And it's not gonna be entirely perfect but I can transform this to a point where it's close enough. Then I'm gonna deselect, erase this center line, maybe a couple of these lines here, and then redo that portion. That way I'm not redoing the whole thing and wasting time. And now I have something that's a bit more centered. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's that's something I, I can do or, um, do from time to time rather if I'm sketching something and I feel like I've made a mistake. And for those of you who are, which I think would have been really useful right now would be like uh, distort or sort of like warp. Um, that's not in Fresco yet, but it will be coming. So yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna mention things that I shouldn't mention. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you do that, bro. <laughs> like Claire Lair. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, like, funny enough, like, it seems like, like, oh, you could just delete it and add a new layer. But, like, when you're working, if everything is about efficiency, right, and anything that takes you out of your workflow. For um, real. You know, like, people will switch tools because of that. Okay, so I added some vents on this so that if the motor is running or when the motor is oh. running, it can, you know, exhaust that, that uh, heat. And probably need a directional switch for this drill. So if we want to go put a screw in as opposed to taking a screw out. Um, we'd want to change the direction somehow. So with that, how about we add a switch. And in case you're wondering, you might be looking at this and going, oh, these ellipses change direction mm -hmm. right about here. Yep. Well, that's because of the perspective and how far away. So in a two-point perspective system, typically you have two vanishing points like so. Um, you might be standing here looking at the scene. And so if I were to draw an ellipse going this way, at some point that ellipse is gonna be um, so far in your periphery that it becomes a straight line. And then as you look to the other side, it's gonna open up. So it looks a little bit weird, but that's kind of how it work. kind of how it would work. That's cool. my that's my ten second explanation. Yep. <laughs> of uh, of that right there. Uh, and thank you, Voodoo Val, for calling out the creative challenge. Um, Spencer and I are actually going to be reviewing submissions in forty minutes. So there's a countdown. Um, we'll be reviewing your submissions about combining images uh, to make a very festive wreath. Bonus points if it includes drill bits. Are you saying I only have forty <laughs> minutes left, Brooke? How am I going to do we've this? Got, we've got some more. We've got some more. Just kidding, I'll be fine. Um, so as far as my workflow and how I like to work, the other thing is I uh, I tend to think of myself more as a, a line artist than a um, painter per se. So as mm -hmm. I'm doing this, I'm, I'm focusing on my line work because if I can get the line work 
good enough, I can move fairly quickly with the application of color and texture for that final sketch. So I have a potential name for this drill. I know that you're going to name it after the, you were going to name it after the person who talked about yes. the LED. Yes. Yes. So Jan in the chat um, thinks that it looks like an Imperial Star drill. Ooh, Imperial Star. Which drill. I really like. Are we going to get sued for that? Nah, we're good. You know, some, some companies <laughs> that we won't name are kind of touchy. So. <laughs> No, but I do like that. The star drill. Or we'll just call it Imperial the star drill. drill. The star drill, the star yeah. Drill. All right, so there was one other part of Scamper that I really like that I want to touch on. And so I'm actually going to move this sketch just down here. Mm -hmm. And if I tap on this layer, I can hit duplicate layer. And now I can move this up. This is another quick way to work as an industrial designer. If you're pumping out a lot of concepts and you just want to focus on modifying or combining or substituting something, you can take your sketch, flip it, reverse it. I think Missy, Missy Elliott has mm -hmm. a song like that. Flip, <laughs> flip it and it, reverse, it, reverse it. it. And then make a cool <laughs> sketch page. So And then work it. <laughs> and then work it. So <laughs> we're going to flip that. And Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna flip that, and then I'm gonna scale this down just a little bit. Done. Pick my next layer here. Move this over, and now I have two concepts on the page. So if I wanted to change something, then or have two concepts that show maybe an alternative idea, mm -hmm. I can do that. So what if, for example, instead of this ball handle, we did something else? I like this too because like you quickly have like you're also composing the page while you're mm -hmm. working on the idea, which but is But I'm working cool. quickly because yeah. I don't have to sketch all this over. I can just focus on yep. the part that I wanna to modify. In fact, if I wanna just keep this sketch intact, I can make a new layer. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna add a layer and then everything else I'll I'll do is um, on top here. So as far as the handle goes, you know, maybe a ball doesn't work, maybe I'd want another ring or something. So maybe it's a two ring design. So mm -hmm. we could sketch an alternative, something like this. For example, mm. so just two ellipses. And I'm not doing this in, in red and blue again, but I can use those two ideas of when in doubt, rough it out, light till you get it right. Okay, so now I have another handle on my drill. If the perspective's a little bit off, I can actually just quickly scale mm -hmm. that to open the ellipse a little bit. Um, there's just so much you can do when you're working digitally that when I was working with just pen and paper, it was so much harder, right? So mm -hmm. if I wanna change the thickness of that, I'll do that again so you guys can see it. I made a selection on the lower half of this and I can actually pick it I can move it up oh, and you'll nice. notice that it looks thinner, yep. right? Or if I want to make it bigger, I could just complete those lines and finish that out. So just by moving the position there, I can modify the design really quickly. So again, just saving time and being efficient. Very cool. So the other part of Scamper that I wanted to touch on, and this is where I want some input from you guys. So hopefully you're ready All right. to throw down it's not chat and win, but it's chat and something. So it's it's chat and hang out with Spencer. <laughs> <clears throat> so if I were if I were to take this power tool and use it in the kitchen, so a drill has a rotary attachment, you could um, maybe translate that that rotary motion into something else. What would you use it for in the kitchen? Ooh. Yeah. I would put a whisk on the end of it. I, I mean put that's a whisk. pretty standard. You could also do like a, the dough hook. You know, Thanksgiving in the United States just happened, and mm -hmm. I wish I had a way to like mash potatoes or great cheese, but I mean like pounds of it, right? Ooh, so yeah. that would be cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on this finishing this top one until we think of some some cool attachments and then I'll sketch <laughs> sketch some ideas in. But in the meantime, I'm gonna clean up the handle here. K Cervantes says whip it good. <laughs> <laughs> Referencing a lot of music today, I like it. I know. Does that make me old if I know what that, that song is, though? No. Okay. Or maybe it makes both of us old. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, Tanya wants a blowtorch for creme brulee. Ooh, okay. Or a milk frother. That's milk a good frother. one. You guys are, I'm, I'm enjoying this one. Okay. 
Someone wants to put a knife on the end of it for cutting. I, f I feel like a, a circular knife is a bad idea. A circular knife? Or like, like right, a drill spins, but well, if you the, put a knife on the end of it, you're like. True. The winner, the winner of the chat and win did say circular saw. Oh, I mean, that's could, true. Yeah, if we had some sort or chainsaw attachment for, mm, yeah. yeah, could be a uh, thing. We're getting a soup mixer, churro shooter. Churro shooter, ooh, that'd be interesting. Uh-huh. Okay. Blitzer? I don't I, is that a reindeer? All right, Brooke, I'll let you pick one. Mmm. I'm kinda liking the creme brulee creme brulee creme brulee torch. Cannot talk to it. Creme brulee today. torch? Okay. Cool. But, like I guess. I, I have could, an idea for okay. that one. Okay. I do have an idea. So okay. let's see, creme brulee. Might be awkward holding it. I mean, maybe it's a massive. I mean, like you've got like yeah, yeah. A, a giant <laughs> like a heavy one. duty thing. <laughs> it's okay. like Costco, <laughs> Costco size. <laughs> <laughs> Feed your entire family. All yeah. right, so creme brulee. We probably need some sort of fuel source. Okay, mm -hmm. right, yeah. some sort of gas. Where, like would, little, where like... would we put that? Um, I'm gonna say the attachment itself here. Maybe that has a combination. Some way to, let's see. Ah, there we go. So maybe the fuel's in the bottom here. So you put this whole thing on. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, I like that. People are really digging this new modified version. And this it's very is... futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> But this is where, it's almost like a weapon though. Um, but this is where the flame would come out <laughs> of our drill. So again, this this is the fun part about design is, you, you know, you have this blank canvas, it can be completely stressful because you're like, hey, I got to fill this with something, especially if you're getting paid. Yeah. But it's also fun because we That's can think super laterally and just do some crazy stuff. Yep. Right? Um, yeah. Maybe that doesn't make sense, maybe it does, but. We'll uh, we'll just we'll roll with it. Yeah, Tanya is actually pretty happy about it. She feels oh, like she it's going to be very useful. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. For your giant Costco size from Berlin. Seriously. All right. So because this is a secondary sketch on the page as well, mm -hmm. um, sometimes I like to intentionally leave it a little bit rougher um, if it's not meant to be the primary idea. Um, again, the way you present a concept immediately creates an expectation mm -hmm. of what this thing is. So the more finished something is, the more someone's gonna think, oh, this is actually done. Yeah. Um, and you could do this all day. Like we could duplicate this layer again and we can scale it down. Mm -hmm. And now I have three concepts on a page pretty quick. That's pretty um, awesome. If you don't want things to be too repetitive, I like to think of my artwork or presentations like a piece of music. Mm -hmm. So each thing on the page is a beat. And if that beat is the same, it gets a bit too repetitive and boring. So if you are going to put your sketch on the page, you'll notice that here, so I'm just gonna tap on this little handle. Mm -hmm. Let me move my hand out of the way so you can see it. Oh, there we go. So this little handle on transform, I can tap and now I can rotate. So I'm trying to put this at an angle that's not exactly the same angle as the previous sketch so that it feels different. Yeah. Okay. And now I can do, I could do the same thing. Let's say we did want to modify the handle here. And I'm gonna do maybe something like this, for example. Maybe a little bit more in line with uh, what's familiar. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is sometimes in a presentation you wanna um, have some concepts that are maybe a little bit more familiar just to give a good range of, uh, you could say mild to wild concepts. Mild to so wild, I like it. Instead of a instead of a wheel handle, I've modified this into more of a barrel design. Yeah. Again, keeping the sketch rough. There's a little part line. You can add. This is just a quick way. Sometimes I like to add texture just with some yeah. stippling. Very cool. And if you guys are just, if anyone is just joining us, I know we have a few people who just joined. Spencer is teaching us how to riff on concepts uh, with the scamper method. Scamper, substitute, combine, adapt, modify or magnify, enhance or eliminate, 
and I always forget R. Give me just a sec. Re replace, replace, refine. Uh, yeah, replace, remove. So if we wanted to remove the handle, that's another thing we could do. We could say, hey, you know, maybe we don't need a handle on the side here after mm -hmm. all. So, you know, what does, what does this thing look like without a handle and just the, oh, the yeah. pivot hinge? We have a few people who are, um, they were concerned on the, on the uh, creme brulee flamethrower thing, mm -hmm. that the fuel source was too close to the flame. So I think there's a couple people who are happy that maybe we, we moved on to another concept. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, we can, we can modify it. So I, I, I was thinking that as I was drawing, I was like, you know, maybe this thing would just explode. Um, so let's go ahead and just change that. I think Xavier will be relieved. Okay. <laughs> he won't. He won't have nightmares thinking about <laughs> Thanksgiving being ruined. All right. So what if? Uh, let's see. There was a a way to maybe plug in some fuel on the back side, Ooh. or on the other side. So this is our little like a little cartridge. Yeah. This is our little fuel cartridge that goes in. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm oh. just gonna throw that in there. But Point being, we now have three concepts. Now you'll notice that each of these concepts on the page is a different size, different position. Again, playing into that, that idea of this being somewhat like a musical composition. So there's a flow, there's an emphasis, and emphasis can be created with scale. So we've, we've done that, check. Yep. So the, the biggest concept on the page, I'm saying, is the most important. Whether or not that's true, that's, that's what happens when we scale things a certain way. Um, whether they're central on the page as well. The next is line weight. So you'll notice that the line weight on the bigger sketch, because it is scaled up, is also a bit more pronounced. Mm -hmm. How refined the sketch is is also gonna create some emphasis, but now we're gonna have fun and we're gonna start adding some color. So once I've worked on my lines and cleaned things up to the point where I'm feeling you know, pretty good about things, um, that's when I like to start blocking in and adding my color and materials. And so I'm gonna open it up to you guys as well. Um, suggestions on materials or colors or anything like that, feel free to throw that at me. I'll just respond as we go and modify. That's a, that's a really good one. How do you typically, like quick process question for you, how do you typically choose colors? Do you like, will you do the sketch in like a few different colors? Do you kind of like work like on different layers until you feel like it's right. You know, there, there's a running joke that industrial designers really, well, I guess it depends on the, the, the era, <laughs> but there's like a teal that we, t yeah. we like to use. Um, it kind of, things kind of went to a pink and gray combination at one point. Um, but when I was in school, it was always orange. It was orange and white. That's what we did, orange and white. So for me, my go-to is tends to be orange or green or something like that. Yeah, I, um, ha I have a good friend who's an industrial designer. Um, who's actually a big fan of yours. And he, oh. like, in grad school, his stuff was either always green, orange, or, like, the pink and yeah. gray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was like, that <laughs> so. was his go-to. <laughs> so as far as colors, I mean, it depends on the brand, too. If I'm working with a certain brand, then I'll try to stick with their colors mm -hmm. um, or materials and so forth. Power tools are interesting, though, because if you do a survey of power tools out there, all the primary colors are pretty much spoken for. Mm -hmm. like if I were to say yellow, you might think of a certain brand, I won't say it. Um, red. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's a blue, bluish green. There's also green. So they're kind of all taken. Yeah. But it looks like I'm seeing silver, yellow, black. I'm seeing orange, orange. metal, black, brush metal. So let's do some brush metal. I like that. Um, let's see, where am I gonna put that? Hmm. Maybe I'll put, so the body, my, my tendency, based on what I know, is to want to make the body um, plastic. <laughs> so I'm going to maybe, maybe get outside my comfort zone a bit and see if there's a way to make this. Um, let's see. I'm not really liking where the light is because that means that I wouldn't be able to rotate it looking at, mm. looking at the parts here. So I'm going to modify this just a little bit, give myself a gap here. So again, the advantages of working digitally is I can just come in, add, modify, correct things as I go. I don't have to start over the entire sketch. It's pretty cool. But I'm definitely gonna include something metallic. And I think 
probably do some gray. And then we just need one color. So whether that's yellow or, um, let's see. The gas got canister a, should be yellow. Got a request for yellow or Oh, fresco branded. We could do that. Green, it's green. Green, I and, mean. green and black, green and gray. Okay. Is there a specific Pantone or CMYK or uh, hex value for probably. that? Probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure we don't <laughs> go too far off. It's kind of like a limey Kelly green something in between those two. Okay, okay. All right. So just with these two lines or this modification, now I'm showing that this might actually be able to rotate. I'm not going to worry mm -hmm. about it for the other concepts, just for time's sake. Um, and then put my little LED light here. In fact, if I were doing this like for a final, final presentation, I might actually crank the opacity down again and do another sketch. And I'm just gonna do a little bit to show you the difference here. Again, just trying to be considerate and thoughtful with those lines, but also redrawing as I go. Mm -hmm. So if I were doing a final presentation, like really final, I would probably do another overlay, but. Gotcha. Just wanna kinda touch on that and show you guys. Yeah. But let's get back to my rough sketch here. I've heard, kind of going back to, you were talking about composition and you know, like the, the page should have like a beat, like you wouldn't have, a, a boring beat would just be sort of like a metronome and there's a reason why it's called a metronome, because mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, I've, I've also, um, <laughs> A lot of people talk about the principles of like small, medium, and large, which I see that you're doing this. Like everything kind of has a small, medium, large, whether it's like line weights or size or um, like even the parts. I see like some of your parts are small, medium, and large. And that's, mm -hmm. I think it's probably something that like I wouldn't always be aware of, but like you just kind of naturally do that. So, sorry, little sidebar. I, I went to screenshot the fresco icon so I could just pick okay. the colors. But, cool. yes. There are beats. So I, I tend to think of things in terms of like three, two, one, um, or one, two, three. So there's a three, two, one to this page. So mm -hmm. small, medium, large. I hadn't heard small, medium, large before, yeah. but um, I, I just, I like to make sure there's a rhythm, a flow, um, a cadence to things, if you will, Yep. Um, as I'm working. <laughs> Kathleen looked up the fresco color code. It's oh. the hex is B7D432. <laughs> Although we don't have hex values in fresco. Oh, that's I mean, true. Like we, have, we haven't added that. That is true. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my recents here, or maybe not. Okay, I'll just use, I'll just find something close enough. How about that? Sounds good. Yeah. I didn't create an album specifically, so. You only need to see pictures of me at the gym this morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least you went, I didn't. Yeah, every day. All right, so for most of my color application, I, I guess I could go on Photoshop, add the color, but that would take extra nah. time, yeah. Um, so I tend to work in just solid colors as I'm painting. So here, for example, and part partly because I don't tend to use masks or um, clipping masks if I'm working on the desktop and so forth. So just by shading the solid color in, I'm able to make a quick selection later if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, also, in terms of layering, um, if I get, so this green area, for example, let's say I want to put uh, maybe a bluish gray to complement that behind it. Because I painted the green on the top layer, I don't need to worry about cleaning up this mm -hmm. edge right there, okay? So I'm just using a hard round brush. In fact, I'll turn off this layer so you guys can see in just a sec. I could use the fill person. fill tool, yeah. but I'll show you why I'm not using it right now. Maybe Brooke will say. I will if say that there's going to be improvements <laughs> coming to it. <laughs> okay, but it it does leave a little, it does. little line, so you could fill in a, if it's a large area, just fill it in and then clean up the perimeter mm -hmm. um, with your brush. It's totally fine. So Carlos is asking if it's possible to save a vector file of this, um, and because this was created in with using all pixel brushes, um, you can't create a vector file from it. But if you Drew using vector brushes, it definitely 100% would be a vector file. Yeah, I haven't played with the vector brushes, to be honest, as much as I probably mm -hmm. should. So 
Um, maybe I'll, I'll tinker with that a bit, but I do love the live brushes and we might use that today. We'll see, okay. see if we get to that point, but definitely tomorrow we'll be using live brushes. All right, cool. All right, so just blocking in my color. This is the part that takes a little bit of time, but it pays off in the end. Yeah, and you just wanna give a quick shout out. We've got 20 minutes, 19 minutes actually until uh, Spencer and I start reviewing the creative challenge. So make sure to post your uh, mixing images to create a wreath, I believe it is, or a festive wreath. And additional challenge bonus points if you put some sort of like power tool in it. <laughs> power tool wreath, that would be Sorry, Anna, I'm riffing on your, <laughs> if I don't know if Anna's in the chat, I'm riffing on your uh, creative challenge. Hopefully you guys watched Anna's presentation. She was pretty cool. I met her at Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super talented. All right. Uh, I'm trying to debate if I want the inside to be gray or not, but I'm gonna. And I like this because, like, already with even just colors, I'm starting to get a sense of texture from all of these, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I think that's the most interesting thing is how color can sort of just like identify texture without even any sort of texture already on so it. So I guess I should explain why I erased this portion. So I originally had this this line here, um, and I was kind of using it as a guide for where to stop on my green, but if you were to actually map this out with um, proper perspective uh, technique, you would notice that I have these lines that are converging to some vanishing point. And so by that deduction, mm. Actually, it should even be more like this. So by that deduction, my green should stop somewhere here, okay? So I had to make that correction because I wanted it to um, be a bit more accurate, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm gonna, I'll just hide that layer. And now erase a little bit. We got a comment, and this is what I was talking about with power tools. Um, based on the color you use, mm -hmm. it's there's a brand association. So yeah. someone mentioned, uh, Ryobi tool, but it's actually fresco because we're using the fresco colors. So, sorry, Ryobi. Yeah, I think Kathleen had a name for it. It was a fresco artistic something tool. <laughs> she was trying to to create an acronym. <laughs> it's definitely a fresco tool though, because only fresco offers attachments for use in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Like flame. I think like, it quickly became a flame <laughs> flamethrower. <laughs> like a flamethrower. Okay, so the battery, let's fill that in. Clean up my boundary here. And so this area here, you'll notice I, I overpainted a bit, but I can approach this two ways. I could erase what I just painted, or I can just rearrange my layers. So, to save time, I'm just gonna drag this below, and now it's cleaned up. Cool, we've got a question. Uh, I know you answered this a little bit before, but Anthony's asking if you work with perspective in all of your work. Um, most times I do, and I try to present things in a perspective that's familiar to whoever's looking at it, because mm -hmm. um, if you present something in an unfamiliar perspective, then it creates a perception that um, is a bit challenging to the mind of the viewer. So mm -hmm. with this drill, for example, I've drawn it in a way that is meant to simulate me looking down at the drill as opposed to looking up or mm -hmm. being eye level, um, which you might associate with something like a building. So I, I like to show things in perspective because it makes them feel a bit more real um, and understandable to people as opposed to just doing pure orthographics. Now, there are instances in which I may do a dead-on view of something, um, but typically that's, I, I reserve that for something like if I'm sketching a shoe, but even yeah. then I like sketching shoes in perspective. I just think it's it's fun yeah. for me personally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a suggestion to put an Apple pencil on the end of it. Ooh. I feel like that would become like some weird spirograph something. I know. That would be that would be interesting. <laughs> so, <clears throat> depending on, you know, again, who you're presenting to and and the intent of your presentation, you could even say, "I'm just blocking in some color." Um, like Brooke said, texture is somewhat implied by the the material choice or the color choice as well. Um, but now we want to add some contrast. And to show you what I mean by uh, the power of line work, 
if I turn this layer off, you'll notice that my color is actually fairly sloppily applied. Mm -hmm. It's the lines that really kind of bring things together and give this um, a feeling of, of togetherness. So now that I've blocked this in, <clears throat> I'm going to focus on a few things. I'm gonna focus on my shadows, and I'm gonna focus on my, my highlights. So with that, and, I'm, and, and just to be clear, I'm working on my layers below uh, my, my sketch layer. So the sketch layer is on top, and the color layers are below that. And so now when I'm working on my uh, shadows and highlights, those are gonna be above the color. Why do I do this? Well, for example, if I'm working with a client and they're like, hey, you know what, we really don't like green. That's not uh, part of our brand anymore. I can make a selection here or lock the transparency, for example. And then let's say they decide to pivot to a red. I can actually come in and just make that red. And when I'm working with my shadows and highlights above this, and I'll use some layer blending modes as well, you'll see how this works. It makes it really easy to make those design changes as it relates to color, material, and finish on those products. Cool. Someone commented, this looks like a Dyson tool. <laughs> Maybe so, so. I think with the like the circuit, like the little, do uh, I don't know what that would be, like the little holder on the end. Oh Kinda yeah, looks like the maybe Dyson. so, maybe so. Uh, thing. I feel like all their colors are like black and white and silver, mm -hmm. yeah. I do, this is driving me crazy, so I'm just gonna add <laughs> a little part line here. Oop, wrong brush, let me go back to the hard round variable brush. And just a little call out here. So where you have two materials mm -hmm. or two things meeting up on a product, I tend to draw two lines mm. as opposed to just drawing one line. And the reason for that, let's, let's have a little educational sidebar. All right. If I have two uh, parts meeting together, they don't meet perfectly together. There's always an easing to that edge. There's a tiny round. Otherwise, we'd just be walking around bleeding if all the products <laughs> were so sharp. There's always an easing to that edge. So if I were looking at something, for example, two parts meeting together, first of all, there's a gap. Okay, there's gonna be a tiny gap. No matter how tight that thing is, there's gonna be a tiny gap. And, <clears throat> excuse me, if you know anything about light, light is gonna pass this edge, like so. It's going to illuminate this edge. Hmm, how do I show that? Let's do a light bulb. So this will be the light mm -hmm. side. And then back in here will be shadow. So when I sketch, I like to have this be a heavier line. Oh. And then this be a lighter line. Okay. And that's just a quick symbol to show. Let's see. Let me do yeah, something like that. Yep. So that's just a quick symbol to show, hey, there's two parts meeting together. Um, they're not perfectly touching each other and the edges eased. Oh, okay. that's a super great tip. So that's that's my that's my symbol and the way that I um, apply my line work to show two parts meeting together. So if you're wondering why, why, why is he doing so many double lines, that's why. Okay, so I fixed that. Now it's time to add my values, or not my values, but my highlights and shadows. Mm -hmm. So to do that, I can use the marker chisel if I want, if, if something's a little shiny. So we'll pick we'll pick a part of this to be shinier, and then we'll also have some finishes that are a little bit matte. So we'll start with the matte. And for that, I'm gonna use the soft round opacity brush. So just on the handle, and you'll see how quickly um, this starts to develop and have some form and definition to it. Okay. So here I'm using a nice soft brush. If you wanna see what this looks mm -hmm. like without the color oh, or something yeah. like that. And just with light pressure, I'm just starting to shade. And as I go, I like to adjust the size of the brush to then create a nice gradient. Now remind area. me, did you, did you set the layer to multiply or anything like Not that? Not yet. Okay. Not yet, I'm just shading right now. And do you ever, like you're creating manual gradients right now, do you ever use the gradient tool, like if you're working in Photoshop? Or? Uh, not really. Okay. I, again, I, I tend to like uh, my things, my, my drawings rather to feel like a human did it. Gotcha. Um, if I use a gradient, it just 
too perfect. To me, it feels perfect. too perfect. Yeah. So, but that's just my, my preference, personally. Yeah. Um, Carlos, to answer your question, does this program work in high resolution? Uh, yes, so Fresco is actually free for anyone to download and use. Um, and with our latest release, we just made um, PSD import export part of the free version now. If you want like a couple extra sparkly things on the top, um, you can also get it with your Creative Cloud, Cloud, Creative Cloud subscription, uh, or you can get it on its own. So just to answer that quick question. That's a pretty good deal, free. It's, yeah, I mean, you can't beat free. Um, Although there is always a price, but I think in this case, your price is time, and your time will be well spent. <laughs> so, Brooke was all worried. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, uh. <laughs> no, it's, we're, it's been We're all fun. about shameless plugs here right now. <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, they su should subscribe to your YouTube channel, which yes. is sketchaday.com. Sketchaday.com, but you want to spell the dot, so D-O-T-C-O-M. Yeah. Or just Google me, Spencer Nugent, you'll find me. Um, I like to, and you're always like I'm streaming, easy to find. you're posting I'm videos all streaming. the time. Yeah, I try to post a sketch or something every day, so that's what I do. Okay, so here you can see I've added a little bit of airbrushing. This will progressively start to add more contrast and the idea of roundness to this presentation. So like Brooke mentioned, if I tap this toggle on the top right of my screen, you'll see this pop out. I'll do it a couple times so you can see where that's happening. Now I can select under blend mode, multiply. So that's gonna interact with the color in a more, um, in a way that makes it feel more natural. I'll say, actually, I should. Uh, I'll talk to you sometime about multiply, and and uh, maybe you can educate me on all that. But okay. um, I just know it makes black things blend with colors in a better way than just <laughs> leaving. It. I feel like multiply is like the magic blend mode. It's, like if, like if in doubt, is. just multiply. If in doubt, multiply it out. <laughs> oh, I should add that one to my repertoire. Yeah. Okay, let's merge these two. I'm gonna. <laughs> Let's see. Our chat's a little bit behind, but uh, Tima says the only thing that's free is cheese in a mousetrap. True. <laughs> and then we've got a few questions, and some of these can bleed over to tomorrow because I know our creative challenge feedback, or it can bleed over until the end of the um, the stream. Someone wants to, Kathleen wants to know what's a day in your life like? What kind of creative stuff fills your time? What is a day in my life like? So I'm a, a full-time single so dad. I have my kids with me all the time. My, oh, wow. my sister has them right now. She's a sweetheart. Hi, Camille. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Camille. Shout out to Camille. Love you. Um, so I get them ready, make their lunches, uh, make sure they read, all that stuff, drop them off, and then it's go time. I have six hours of uninterrupted productivity oh, time, and I just go, go, go. So I'm either recording a video, I'm doing work for clients, I'm meeting with people, all that stuff. Then I pick them up. And I try to have my work done, but if I don't, um, sometimes I have to just say, hey, you know, I've got to do a little bit more here. Yeah. Um, and then I just spend time with my kids. So that's that's a typical day for me. Um, it's great. I love it. Life's good. Do you good. find that having the time constraint makes you more productive? I do, actually. Um, and I, I try to do what I call three small things every day. Hmm. So I pick three small things I want to accomplish, whether it's, hey, I'm going to record one video, I'm going to work on this one thing for this client, or hey, I'm going to have coffee with this friend. And those are three things. And I try to get those three things done every day. That's super cool. I yeah. like that. All right, so let's make one of these parts shiny. And then we'll add a background and we'll call it good. So I've got to add some white. And for the white, I want to make sure my layer is either set to overlay or screen. It just depends on what mm -hmm. I'm feeling like that day, honestly, um, and how it, how it turns out with the color. So. Okay, we're set to overlay, and with contrast, if you're applying contrast, you want to put your lightest lights against your darkest darks, and that's going to get you the uh, effect that you're after. Okay, so I can paint on my knob here. So we have someone in the chat who has to leave. I said, unfortunately, I have to go now. It was amazing. I'm going to use the three things rule. Thank you so much for all the tips and generally for the stream and fresco. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Oh, Milan wants you to come to India and teach him sketching. <laughs> Slide into my DMs, we'll chat. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So are you still using the same brush? Yeah, for so the I'm highlights? still using the the airbrush for now because I just want to make sure things feel uh, like they're illuminated in the scene. And then if I want to change the surface finish, I can do that after. So let's jump to surface finish. I'm going to pick this marker chisel brush, still on white, and scale this down. Let's do a test here. Okay, so I'm at 48 pixels. And now, if something's shiny, just adding that crisper oh, yeah. highlight. Again, if you have those light lights on those dark darks, it really will help things pop. Wow, this is awesome. So you can see how once you get your color in, it's really easy to then just apply, or it should be easy, to apply uh, your highlights and shadows in a way that will really help your design or your sketch pop. So even mm -hmm. something like this, this little bit of white, wherever there's a part line or something that I want to, so if that's shiny, for example, it might oh, yeah. catch little awesome. highlights. Just, just, that, just that little little hit there. Um, yeah. And just the, to reiterate, you're using white on a screen layer? In we this instance, question. I'm using pure white. Okay. So but when you were doing the highlights, it was a yeah a for the light. for the highlights with the airbrush, it was uh, overlay is what I said overlay. It to actually okay. um, instead of uh, screen. But gotcha. Depends on the day. Depends on how I'm feeling. Depends on what the outcome yep. is. But the goal is really just to have some contrast. So something else I'll do here with this round brush is I'm going to use pure black and then I'll adjust the opacity of the layer. So sometimes I'll work with the opacity of a brush, but other times I'll work with the opacity of a layer. So right where I had this toggle for the direction, I can drop oh, yeah. the opacity back on this black. And if I want to show other material changes along the way, I can leverage this black layer, or it might be something like a shadow Super cool. being cast on the battery, for yeah. example. So just kind of an auxiliary or extra layer that I can use to help show some shadowing where I need to show it. This is awesome. I'm going to answer answer a couple quick fresco questions. Um, someone asked about cropping, um, if it's manually or input based. Um, I'm not for sure what you mean by that, but you can change the canvas size, which is kind of like cropping, I guess. Um, if you go to the gear at the top and then you can change your canvas size. Um, and then also Fresco is available on the iPad and on certain Windows devices. So if you have a Surface Pro 4, 5, or 6, um, Surface Studio, Mobile Studio Pro 13 and 16 inch, and coming to more devices soon. All right. And then someone was asking why you don't use a glove. A lot of people glove use like what? gloves when you draw, <laughs> so you don't make marks on the screen. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, because fresco is awesome and the palm detection works, so I don't need to worry about oh, okay. a, a, a glove or rather my yeah my hand causing uh, strokes that shouldn't be there. And so do you again, have a screen cover or do you use? I, I am using a screen cover. It's the cheapest cover I could find on Amazon, um, mm -hmm. and I just look for just a matte screen protector. Cool. So I'm adding a little bit of texture to this knob. I could even mm. add a directional arrow. Oh, shoot, that's what I forgot to add here. So we had mentioned, or Brooke had mentioned, that my lines kind of had this quality that um, maybe suggested the movement uh -huh. or the functionality. Sometimes I like to just draw an arrow. So a couple ellipses offset from each other, and I can sketch in just an arrow here. Oh, cool, yeah. Using those ellipses. Like so, just cutting out what I don't need. We've got a quick question about what you what brush you were using for shadows. I know we chatted about it before, but it's the soft round. I was using the solid round, solid um, round. for the shadows. Okay, and I just cranked the opacity down. Yeah, on that. So sometimes I'll add just a little extra um, arrow to show some movement if necessary, and then for the chrome on this. Like <laughs> Chrome's really easy, so I I sketched this and shaded it in just a 
light gray. Mm -hmm. And with chrome, you get what's called artifacting and aberrations. And so this might be something in the environment that's just really compressed down. And if you want, you can even just make that a little rough. And then if I just switch to white um, and add just a couple white spots there, I now have a nice chrome bit holder. Very cool. Um, Jan, the one who felt like this was an Imperial drill from Star Wars, um, wants to make sure that I tell you, I think he's, he said Anne, but I'm Brooke, but I'll, I'll, I'll be referred to as Anne, okay. that's fine, um, that he, he really loves your shadows. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, we are at time for the design Here? review. Yeah. Do you think we should switch over to that really quickly? I think really we quickly? can switch over, yeah. Cool. But I think we'll have a little bit more time because I think okay. we'll get through the, the design. If we have time, there's a couple of things I'll do, but I'll just leave this for now. Okay. Cool. All right. So we've got this creative challenge here where people are supposed to mix and match images to create a festive wreath. Bonus points. Bonus. We got a drill. <laughs> we got a drill. I love it. I know. And I, I saw, love the corgis. I, for, I forget who posted this, but it was actually posted twice. Oh. It, it was reposted. Oh, after with the modification. I, with the with the drill modification. I suspect a corgi was in in. Uh, is that a corgi? I'm gonna I say it's a corgi. corgi. Okay. I yeah. suspect a corgi was in the place of the drill, but I like the creative. <laughs> I like the creative approach there. <laughs> Very nice. A nice job with the hand uh, lettering. Yeah, CC. Yeah, it is really nice. Yeah. It looks like Photoshop brushes, maybe. Like the, the leaf, there's some leaf brushes. Yeah. All right, tan, not a power tool, but another sketch. I wasn't fast enough. Very inspiring, Spencer. That's oh, thank awesome. You. That is nice. I like I like that the color is non-traditional. I'm mm -hmm. not a traditional person myself, mm -hmm. so I, I do appreciate the non-traditional color approach there. Yeah, and I really like, I don't know if, um, yeah, the drawing is nice too. I like the, the incorporation of sort of like the creative challenge with like yeah. the industrial design the, yeah, theme yeah, that, that we're going interesting. with. Yeah, so nice job, nice work. And the paper texture. Oh, cool. I just noticed the paper texture, yeah. that's really cool. It's a nice little element. Do you think the sketch in the background was done on paper and then brought in, or do you think really the sure. texture was applied after? I'd be curious after? to know, yeah. uh, Tan 2019. Hmm. If you're in the chat, let us know. Oh, was it oh, Tanya? Oh, there she is, Tanya. Okay, yeah. So Tanya, I'm curious to know if you also did the, the drawing with the sink in the bottle. Cool. Um, Gerard, happy holidays. Got okay. some very cosmic looking uh, flowers in there. I do like the flowers <laughs> and the colors. So I'm, <laughs> as I mentioned, from Jamaica. Uh -huh. I love, love, love bright, intense colors. Um, I'm usually either wearing all black or just some <laughs> Crazy! You remember my pink you shoes see from his Max? Shoes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm you usually got great wearing... shoes on today too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm usually wearing a uh, bright color or black, so I love this. Awesome. Love the color. That's bold. Cool. Uh, Tanya said that she did this in Fresco, and I know Tanya's on Windows, Fresco Windows. So oh, she did cool. This. What Very device nice. are you using, Tanya? I'm curious. I think maybe a Mobile Studio Pro, but I can't remember. We'll let her answer. The only reason I know is we've we do a lot of chat and there's, uh, a, there's okay. a Fresco Slack channel that pre-release people are on and uh. we're we're helping her out with some problems she was having. All right, this is very traditional. We've combined the wreath with it looks like we've done the Photoshop composition of like some wreath, some like that looks like mint. Definitely uh, like a photo collage. Yeah. You know when I saw this immediately and maybe it's the word or maybe it's the composition. I just felt good. Yeah, so, kind of like whatever warm you're doing, and nice. Yeah, it just made me feel good. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Tanya's using a Surface Book Ah, too. Surface Book 2. Cool. Cool. Uh, nice job, Ant. Uh, oh, it looks like Sam gave his own feedback on this. So we'll keep moving up. We'll see. All right. Oh, ooh, we've got a uh, non, we've got mixed media. I mean, it's a cool collage. It's not flowers, but I'm into it. Oh, is it? Is this animated? It's an animated GIF. That's awesome. Oh, okay. <gasps> At first, I thought I was doing it's something like, or like my It's like my day screen. to night. I know I was wondering yeah. too, but it's like day oh, to night. Oh, really it's really nice. Cool. Yeah. It's cool, like morning to evening. You know, it's interesting, like speaking of how you were working on lighting and you know a lot about lighting, like mm -hmm. how much lighting can totally affect. Totally change like, the mood of totally something. Totally change the mood. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> we have a scroll playing golf. I'm pretty into this. Oh, also another like animated GIF situation going on. So it's like they're the lighting on the scrolls like appearing and going away. Maybe it's just like the before and after. Maybe it's the before and after. Yeah. I'm Either way, <laughs> I mean, if I saw a squirrel playing golf, I would definitely be stopped in my tracks. So. <laughs> With a fox in yes. the background. All right, this one's nice and simple. Got some flowers on the on the evergreen wreath. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Camellio. More foxes. Ooh, it's oh. like a texture. Texture or blur? Is it like a, it's like one of those uh, filters that you can add like the, um, like the, the filter effects in Photoshop. Uh -huh. I do like the, the texture. Mm-hmm. Very Oh nice. no, it looks, it makes it look like watercolor. I think uh -huh. that's what it is. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I do like that. Uh, little trick, and this is like a cheater's trick. Okay. But I taught a couple people this. So if you take a photo and you bring it into Fresco uh -huh. and you like choose one of your live brushes and you double tap the shortcut so it turns it on. So you're only like drawing with water, only drawing with a dry brush for your oils. You can like paint over the image. And, and it like will use the cheat, color and everything? Yeah, like no way. do a cheat watercolor and cheat oil painting. I'm gonna have to try painting. that. That is awesome. <laughs> Although I do like doing things the hard way, so. Oh, so it looks like we're totally off. Voodoo Val says, I think people are making gifts to demonstrate feedback suggestions. Oh, okay. I mean, I was kind of into the day to night situation yeah. that was happening. All good. <laughs> All right, happy holidays. Ooh, very nice. Good hand lettering. It's very graphic. I like mm -hmm. it's very flat, but um, and deliberate, and I like yeah. that. It I looks like, like it would one. be like on a card. And the hand lettering is great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very nice. Oh, what do you know? Oh, beautiful. I like the layout. That's really clever. Really creative. Putting it in a scene, it really helps you like understand. This must be from yesterday. I'm, I'm like kind of into the animal challenge. Hey, you know what? We'll take them all. Uh-huh. Snow leopard, can I zoom in? It looks like there's some interesting like photo effect happening. Yeah. Cool. Do you know if these were done in fresco too? No, I think oh, okay. they're Photoshop. I think okay. the, it's a Photoshop challenge, I believe. Yeah, because I'm in the Photoshop channel okay. on Discord. All right. So I fixed the text a bit and added a background. What do you think? Nice. Some more hand lettering. Ooh, the hand lettering. Ooh, I really amazing. like it. It's like a combination of. Yeah, hand lettering is something I've I've wanted to be better at, mm -hmm. and I still work at it. Um, but this is great. Yeah, I love this it. is really cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Update. Darker text, slight blur. Very nice. I don't know what this was created in. Looks like it was all hand done. Very nice. Good job. Grow blossom flower. I think we're like getting a combination of some of the different challenges, which I'm, I think so. I'm but into. it's all good. Oh, I was trying to figure out what this was. It's a, a ballerina. Cecilia like says that's Anna's. Was Anna's the very flat graphic with the hand lettering? Is that, is that what she's referring to? Oh, maybe. Hmm. Yep. Ah, gotcha. There we go. Well, I'm nice work, Anna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how you did the, the hand lettering on there. It looks yeah, like- Yeah, was that like It a, looks like there's like a couple, like maybe she went over it a few times with the different colors. Hmm. So I feel like I'm, you can't really see it up there on the screen, but here it looks like like there's some pink and some yellow and some orange going on. Okay, I think we're into the next day. This is an interesting perspective. That is interesting. It almost is it a person? You know, when down? I when I looked at it, I thought, is this like a ballerina? Because the yeah, the top yeah. looks like ballet shoes. Uh-huh. Um, but I do like where the comp the composition, the photo background is pulling your eyes in and you can't help but look at that spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of all those deliberate lines. So yeah, and the angles cool. like the angles like very weird and I'm very uh, like I'm into it. Yeah. It's just a, an interesting angle and point. Cecilia has an answer about oh. Anna's piece. 
She traced the font with a brush. That makes sense. Yeah. That's actually like a really smart that's move. Good, I've done that's that a good way. I've done that before as a trick when you're like doing designs for something. You're like, I feel like it should be hand lettered. Yeah. But I'm not really great at hand lettering, and so I just trace. And there I am doing things the hard way. Yeah. Maybe that's my <laughs> problem. I need to follow Anna. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so it looks like we're back, oh, today. So some more adding, collaging stuff to create oh, yeah. something. Looks like we've added in some texture on the ribbon, which is cool, or created it from texture. Very cool. Very nice. Got a lot of Christmassy themes going on here. Lots of reds and greens. Hand drawn in Photoshop. Ooh. Yep. That's cute. That is Kathleen. cute. It's a delightful stocking. Mm-hmm. So do you do stockings for your kids? I do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I need to take them out still, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm late. You know, there's 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 two types of people, right? Well, not two, but I'll focus yeah. on two. There's the people who like get Christmas ready before Halloween, uh -huh. and then there's people like me who get it ready a week before Christmas. So, yeah, I'm kind of your okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we should be getting a Christmas tree yeah. at some point. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we're we're well past our um, our challenge for today. Let's go back. I know you had a couple okay. things you wanted to finish up. Yeah, when just, you're a, just a couple things. Um, we have our concepts and I, I won't um, you know fill this out in detail, but I want to show you the power of another uh, element you can add to your concept page if you're doing some kind of product design is to start to label things. Mm. And I typically hand letter, but I'm just gonna put some scribbles in um, to a couple of these because it'll just show you um, what adding these captions can do to the page. Like so, so here it is on the page and without, and you can see it just kind of helps give some context, if you will, to the to the product itself. Mm -hmm. But for our concept here, um, I can actually do. Sorry, it looked like a heart, but that's actually an arrowhead. <laughs> um, typically, my arrowheads are something like that. Um, if I do it really fast, it looks kind of like that. But <clears throat> when I'm lettering for my product concept, I, I try not to write my letters, but I try to draw my letters. So for example, I'm going to draw two guidelines, like so, I guess I should do them horizontally, just to make sure, so just like so. And um, let's say I wanna say turn knob to, or rotate knob to turn on, okay? So I would write my letters, or draw rather, Rotate to turn on, just like that. And so now I have a note to add a little bit of context or information mm -hmm. to this sketch. Um, you can do the same thing here. Say removable battery. Oops, let's do a new line. I probably should use a different brush for the lettering. Um, but just another note on that lettering, I'm switching to a pen here. When I say I draw my letters, this is what I mean. So let's say you have three lines like so, um, and I can play with the proportion of these lines. I could also do three lines like this, or I could do three lines like so. So if I'm writing the letter A, I can write it like that, or I could write an A like that, or I could write an A like that. And so this is how you can kind of develop your own designer lettering or handwriting. So B could also be like so, or it could be like so, mm -hmm. right? So those three have a completely different feeling, but develop your own style, figure out what works for you, and go from there. C is obviously gonna be very similar for these, the same. D, you could say maybe you make some some differences uh, yeah. there, but there's different ways to approach that. So that's what I mean by um, drawing my letters because when I'm writing, I tend to be more like this and not as uh, thoughtful or deliberate mm -hmm. about what I'm doing. So did you did you work to refine a sort of like style for um, your design? Initially I did, and then I got kind of lazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's, it's something that I, I try to consciously um, work on from time to time. So here, for example, let's see, let me deselect this. 
if I were to project a line through, you'll notice that my R, the A, the E, they're kind of on that middle of this line that I, I wrote on. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of just defaulted to that. But um, more importantly, it's about drawing each stroke of those letters. Mm, yeah, I get really sloppy possible. with my handwriting. Um, the R is probably a little bit sloppy, but since you called me on it, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a matter of just um, figuring out figuring out what works for you, and then you'll get in the habit of, of doing it. Yeah. So that's just a little bit on notes. And the other thing the other thing about notes that's really cool is here we have this sketch in the background. Um, we modified the handle, so I can add a couple things like barrel grip, for example. So this is my barrel grip concept. And if there's a certain material or something, um, I think someone had requested brush metal earlier. Mm -hmm. And since we didn't execute that, I can just say brushed metal. So design sketching is really just about communicating ideas and one of the easiest ways to communicate an idea or thing is to just write what it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it seems like a maybe a little bit of a cheat, but that's that's the whole point of the sketch is to communicate the idea or the concept. Yeah, people are really loving your uh, your description about like how you how you develop your handwriting style. Oh, cool. Well, mm -hmm. ho hopefully you guys that's something you guys can practice and work on a little bit. Um, so. A couple elements to really just help this pop a little bit more on the page. I, I like to do what's called grounding my sketches. So I'll add shadows, I'll add backgrounds, I'll even enhance line weight where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So in this scene, for example, uh, I'm just going to do a top layer and I'll do this all in red so you can see it. I'm in my head imagining that there's some light source from the coming from the top of this scene. That's why my shadow in this area is cast below the ball because, mm -hmm. and that's why I have a highlight here, is because my light source is coming from above. Same thing on this edge. I have that light source illuminating that edge. So away from that light source, I wanna make my line weights just a little bit heavier and then add a shadow. Now, I can't Gaussian blur yet, so I'm gonna- It'll be coming. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> shade in my shadow with, with uh, just the airbrush here. I mean, like as a side note, like you know, Fresco just came out in September, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of um, tools and things that we know that people need and want to use in their drawings, and all those things are coming. So I, I do sound like a broken record, but like it's coming. <laughs> uh, and Cecilia just asked if Control Z works in Fresco. So keyboard shortcuts are actually coming very soon, uh, so early next year. I was gonna say I've never used. Well, I don't use a keyboard while I paint. Um, at least on my iPad, but yeah. I assume she means uh, with Windows, well, right? Well, some people actually on their iPad, they have like a Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, a Bluetooth keyboard, keyboard as yeah. well? Oh. Um, That's how I used to work on my desktop. I would have my keyboard and yep. a tablet and then be looking at my screen and working, yep. but um, I try to keep it all here now on this uh, iPad Pro. Okay, so just with my airbrush, I have brushed in the shadow, and I'm gonna drag this way down to the bottom on my sketch, but now I have a shadow on this page and I can play with the opacity just enough to say, hey, this thing is, nice. is resting on a surface. And then for the background itself, you could do this a couple ways. Um, you could use a solid color. You could just have a simple line. For my purposes today, I'm just gonna do a simple line background. So new layer, I'm gonna put it just in the back and I'll use the pen, just a nice solid line. And this is where, or this is an instance rather, where I will actually use uh, tools and guides to create a nice crisp background. So the background is going to serve a couple purposes. One is to connect, uh, conceptually connect these concepts and say they're related. So, for example, if I drew this rectangle, and this rectangle was only intersecting with these two concepts, immediately my brain goes, oh, these two must be related. There's mm. a connection there. As opposed to if I were to 
uh, connect this background to all three, now I'm saying, oh, these oh, three cool. are a family. So depending on how you want to guide someone looking at your presentation, just that simple tweak, I mean, moving that one line immediately connects all three or connects the two. So, uh, oh, uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, uh, Jan is in the chat again and he said, how is this man so talented? I'm envious, please teach me. <laughs> you can have Spencer teach well, you. Thank you. I do Based travel. Based on your I, YouTube I do, <laughs> well, there is YouTube. <laughs> sketchaday.com on YouTube. Um, also Instagram, I'm all over. But I do in-person workshops from time to time. So if that's something you're interested in, hit me up. Um, cool. We can talk about that. And um, yeah, I've had I've had the opportunity to even work with Adidas in Germany for a week, which was super fun, um, just training their designers. So that's something that, that I've done um, on occasion. That's very cool. So here where this sketch is overlapping the background, I'm just going to... Is embolden a word? Em embolden. Embolden. Uh, it is now. I'm pretty into it. I'm going to make these lines just a little bit bolder, um, right where the overlap's happening. And so now, there's, a there's, a, there's an implication of depth or dimension um, on this sketch and concept. And it also reinforces the hierarchy with the scale and with that line weight to say, we have a primary sketch that has colors and materials, and we have the secondary sketch that has uh, a little bit heavier line weight on it. Okay, and on our primary sketch, similar thing, like I mentioned, the light source is coming from above. So everything that is away from the light source, significantly away, I'm just gonna add a little bit of line weight here, make it heavier on the outline, but not on the top of the sketch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is totally. Okay. Because the so, top of the sketch is closer to that light source. Uh, just a side note, we've got four minutes left. Okay. Which is enough time for like people to ask you like one or two more questions. You can ask me questions. I'm gonna do one more thing. We're gonna do one more thing. This is gonna drive me crazy if I don't do it. Okay, <laughs> do it. So with that marker chisel, real quick, light gray, your secondary sketch, you just wanna hit uh, a couple areas where there might be shadow, hmm. but not add color, just enough Again, if you're thinking of that small, medium, large, mm -hmm. or three, two, one hierarchy, there, and we're done. So that's all I wanted to do, or it was gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> so thank you, I Brooke. really like that. Like even just that little <laughs> bit really helped sort of like pull yeah. it out and separate it from yeah. the smaller one. Thank you, Brooke. Um, yeah. Um, do we wanna give a sneak peek about what we're doing tomorrow or no? Or are we gonna leave it as a surprise? So tomorrow I'm planning on doing something architecture related, Ooh. but also transportation related. So if we have time to do both, awesome. But I'm gonna focus primarily on architecture. So um, I have this dream of building a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. And so one of my pet projects is just drawing these modern cabins for one person. <laughs> In the middle of nowhere. That's so awesome. that's kind of what we're gonna do. And we'll be we'll be using live brushes. Okay, yeah. cool. I have one last request. Okay. Can we see the time lapse? Oh shoot. Okay. I think that could be kind so of fun. So the time lapse, if we go to publish and export, like so. Can I hit play here? Mm, yeah, Let's you see. Should. Time lapse. There, oh, you go. there we go. All right. So we're gonna ready. see the time lapse. You guys ready? For those who've been here since the beginning. You'll see everything. <laughs> so we covered Scamper today. Substitute, combine, adapt, modify, put to another use, enhance or replace. We did our thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Form, divide, beautify, right? Here's our mm -hmm. form. Thanks, Voodoo Val. Voodoo Val posted a link to the uh, Instagram yep. in the chat, so you can click on that. We did our warm-ups, mm -hmm. circles, ellipses. We even drew a car. I totally forgot about that today. <laughs> <laughs> a very wide car, but we did a car. Yep. Um, looked at the structure of the drill, mm -hmm. and then modified it. I will say, that first concept, I really wasn't feeling it. Oh, really? Yeah. The, yeah, so the glad, bendy thing? Yeah, yeah. It started looking like an elephant trunk, and I was like, yeah, no. I was thinking it was looking a little bit like a giraffe. I was like, yeah. well, I mean, like, functionally, like, maybe you need yeah. to, like, have a little bendy drill. Maybe. Can... maybe. I mean, things can bend in different yeah, ways, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, blue blue pencil sketch, refine that. Uh -huh. You know, on its own, this could be a fine final concept, but I like the idea of 
uh, taking that sketch, just flipping it, modifying it, and then creating yeah. a sketch page that's well, way love, more interesting. Yeah, and I love that we sort of like riffed on it too, because then you can see like. And thanks so much for the input, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. I, I feel like maybe we should like post this somewhere. Okay. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I'll definitely it post it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You guys can post it too, but I'll definitely be posting it on my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Sketch it out. Now that you all are following it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right. We'll see you all tomorrow. We'll do live brushes, architectural drawing, and possibly transportation. Possibly. Okay. All right. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thank you.